Hi, honors math one at Shasta High. This is Mr. Roberts, and this is a quick look at the study team test that you took after chapter seven. Um, this is here uh, to help perhaps you prepare for the uh, test that you'll be taking on this by yourself. Um, remember, uh, these are just kind of representative problems of the types of skills that you should have and be aware of. It's not a definitive list. Um, as you go through these, um, I encourage you to kind of look over your homework, find problems that are similar, um, look at them in the textbook, try to do them again, um, and then verify that you're um, correct. So first question is, what are the five triangle congruence that allow us to prove triangles uh, must be congruent? So we established these. Um, we spent quite a bit of time playing with the uh, Desmos tools, Desmos tools um, that the textbook provided and seeing um, what conditions will ensure that there is a series of rigid transformations that would map one triangle onto another. Um, one of the ways was that if um, all three pairs of sides are congruent, right? If we have three sides that match up with three sides in the other triangle or side, 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 the triangles end up being congruent. Also, if we have a pair of sides and the angle that's in between them, the included angle, that seemed to make the triangles rigid and uh, and congruent. Um, another possibility was that we have two angles and then the side that connects or runs between those two. So two corresponding pairs of angles and the side that's in between them, um, ASA, produced congruent triangles uh, in all cases that we observed. And uh, uh, related to that is uh, angle angle and then a side. And the reason why I say it's rela related is because if you were to move forward and uh, consider the um, third, uh, the, f the fact that the three angles in a triangle add up to 180, it has to be the case that this third angle would be congruent also. So you can see that this reduces to angle side angle. And similarly is the hypotenuse leg. Um, this only applies if you have a couple right triangles. So you do have two pieces of information. You've got a congruent hypotenuse and a leg. And if I was to do a quick sketch here, um, if you look at this, if I know, for example, that uh, this leg and this leg are congruent and both of the hypotenuses are congruent, it has to be the case um, because of the Pythagorean theorem that these third sides would have to be congruent. Um, because if I was to solve each of them using the Pythagorean theorem, I would get the same value each time. So if you look at that, that ends up becoming side angle side. So the thing about hypotenuse leg is with the Pythagorean theorem, um, it ends up becoming SAS. So a couple of these are related to each other. Anyways, um, our textbook later on in the chapter did, um, I think, an okay attempt at establishing why some of these are congruent. I think they've saved a couple for later, but but why these conditions work. Um, so uh, needless to say at this point, we're calling these congruence conditions. There's five of them. And if one of these conditions is met, um, for the time being, the ones, even the ones that we didn't prove in class, we're going to uh, um, assume that those triangles are congruent until we have other information. Uh, also, this, this diagram was part of this question. This was part B. And it says, show. Uh, congruence conditions that you would use to show that triangle FHG is congruent to triangle HFE. And there's not a lot of information here at all, um, but there is this observation that two of my sides are parallel, right? This side, FE, is parallel to GH, although it doesn't look like it at all. But those sides are marked as uh, parallel to each other. And anytime I draw a transversal that connects those two, so if you can see, I can go from that parallel line over here to this one. When I draw that transversal, um, if I have an angle that starts at one of the parallel lines and ends on the transversal, and you can see I'm starting on the transversal and ending on the parallel lines, right? If, if, if you have angles in between the transversals and the uh, parallel lines, these, these angles are called alternate interior angles. And it has to be the case that these angles are congruent to each other. So because we can show that this pair of angles I've marked in green are congruent, and also um, even more so, this side that I'll mark with, with these two tick marks, those sides, they, they both triangles share them. So by the reflexive property, 
they have to be congruent. So if you look at we ha what we have here, we have exactly uh, angle side angle. So we can write that's our reason. These two triangles are congruent because of ASA.